Okay. All right. So we're going to be doing Kuna, the eel, and the puhi, and Hina, and Maui. And I want to share with everybody that I learned this mo'olelo by listening to it over and over with a deer. And I call him my, my kumu or a mentor of mine, uh, Tom Cummings, who comes from the island of Maui and who I had the uh, privilege of working with at the Bishop Museum for many years. And so uh, this is how he would tell this story. It was just amazing. So Kuna the eel uh, fell in love with Hina, the mother of Maui. And Hina was this amazing kapa maker who lived in a cave under Waianue Nue, which is Rainbow Falls. It's called Rainbow Falls in Hilo, but it's called its its name is Waianue Nue, because if you've ever been in Hilo, uh, these falls always have a rainbow, just the way that it falls. Uh, down into the pool underneath and you can see the cave of Hina under under Waianue Nue. So this eel and some people call it uh, also a mo'o right a dragon fell in love with Hina and her beauty and he tried his best to uh, woo her and to ask her to live with him and he had a, spa a place on this river called Wailuku. And his place where he lived was called Kunavai. Yeah. And so she, she just wanted to make kapa. And she didn't even give him up. Didn't even realize how much he was in love with her. And so he was so hurt by uh, her, his rejection. Or he felt what she was rejecting him that he started he captured her and kidnapped her to live with him and so when when she struggled with him actually in her cave she called out to her son maui maui and because maui you know he's a demigod and he has all these powers he heard his mother's cry and with two strokes of his paddle on his canoe on his va'a he he arrived at the mouth of wailuku through Hilo Bay and today there's actually a stone uh, a po uh, like pohaku that looks like a va'a at the at the edge of Wailuku and that's Maui's canoe Maui's va'a and with two uh, steps of his great feet he made it up to to save his mother Hina and when she was protected, Kuna the eel had slithered away and he was hiding in the, in the lava tubes of Wailuku. Now, the Wailuku River is, there's all kinds of ways that you can come. And because of the lava tubes, the eel, Kuna the eel hid really well underneath the rushing water and through the lava tubes. And so Maui asked for help from uh, Pele the goddess of the volcano and so she hearing his help she actually gives a uh, maui hot rocks to use and so he threw these rocks into the different uh pools of water and it went in and bubbled and but it got so hot that kuna the eel couldn't handle and so he started to pop up and down into the lava tubes in this one portion of the wailuku river that is called pe'e pe'e and this Pe'e Pe'e Falls, they call it, has all these lava tubes. So as he's popping up, Maui is trying to hit him with his club. And so he keeps missing. But finally, one time when the eel's head comes up, Maui hits his eel, the eel's head and it actually goes rolling off to the side on the embankment of the of Wailuku River. And it is said that nine months later, a tall tree grew with these big leaves and there was a fruit and when you husk the fruit it had the face like you see behind me the face of kuna the eel and so we know that it takes a coconut tree long right and it looks like the eel and you see the face of the eel when you open it up and so you know hina hina is was always protected by his her son maui and Kuna the eel still today gives to us much food and water in the form of the coconut tree or the new.